The rapture pattern. A lot of things in the Bible are put in order for us to understand. One comes after another, comes after another for a purpose and a reason. I believe that God has done this on purpose so that we can understand a pattern, a sequence of events. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we see what is commonly known as the rapture. In the Greek, it's actually harpazo, which means caught up, being caught up with the Lord. The word rapture means to be changed, so I believe that both of these things have to happen at the same time. Then in the very next chapter, chapter 5, we see the day of the Lord, which is the wrath of God. So a perfect sequence, a perfect pattern showing us that the rapture, harpazo, happens before the day of the Lord, or the wrath of God. Then we go into the book of Revelation, chapter 6. We see the heavens being rolled back as a scroll. That would be the appearing of Christ, which matches up with Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. Hence the rapture, or harpazo. Then in the very next chapter, perfect sequence, perfect order, a perfect pattern, we see a great multitude in heaven at the throne of God. That is because that was the product of the rapture. Then we see in the very next chapter, chapter 8, the first angel blowing the first trumpet, which is the beginning of the wrath of God, also known as the day of the Lord. We see these awesome patterns put together for us in sequential order so that we can understand the order of events. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we also see a pattern. The Apostle Paul writes, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, which day? The day of the Lord, or as this chapter describes him, the day of Christ, Christ is the Lord. Paul says, That day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. Then he goes on to talk about the man of sin, the son of perdition, who we commonly call the Antichrist, setting himself up in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, calling himself God above all things. So there are three things that have to happen there. A falling away. The man of sin, son of perdition, being revealed, we all must know who he is. And that man of sin, sitting in the temple of God, over there in Israel, proclaiming himself to be God. Some people say that the falling away is actually a departure. The departure is the rapture, they say. But in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul writes, Now in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There's the departure, a departure from the faith, the exact same meaning as a falling away. Also, in the Greek, the word is apostasy or apostasia, which means a rebellion. There is no way that we can confuse a rebellion with a rapture. Has that happened? I believe that a good argument can be made that there has been a major rebellion or a departure from the faith and that it will only continue to get worse. Secondly, on the list, has the man of sin, the son of perdition, been revealed? How do we know who exactly it is? I believe that the way the man of sin, the son of perdition, or the Antichrist is revealed officially is when he sits in the temple of God, proclaims himself to be God and above all that is called God, then there will be no doubt that that is him. Has that happened? No, it has not. So why are people looking for a rapture right now? Why are people looking for Jesus right now, even when Jesus said himself that the one who comes after me, him, you will receive? I believe it's seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. People want 
the great tribulation to be the wrath of God. They want the great tribulation to be the day of the Lord. But, but when we look in Revelation chapter 6, and we see the great tribulation in the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth seal, we know that that is not the day of the Lord or the wrath of God. That is because in Revelation chapter 6, on the sixth seal, we see that the heavens are rolled back as a scroll, and there is a great earthquake. Hence, as I said in the beginning of this video, the rapture. The argument can be made that the blood moon and the sun going to dark, in which we call a solar eclipse, and the stars falling from heaven giving their light, like untimely figs, have already happened. If you read Acts chapter 2, it says that those things, the sun going to darkness, the moon turning to blood, happened back in Acts chapter 2. That's what it looks like. Regardless, we have blood moons, lots of years. We have solar eclipses, lots of years. And the stars falling from heaven like untimely figs, to me, looks like it can be Revelation chapter 12, when the dragon drew a third of the stars from heaven. Speaking of angels. So the argument can be made, those things have already happened. But the argument cannot be made, obviously, that the rapture has happened yet. And I also do not believe that the argument can be made that the heavens have been rolled back like a scroll. And that people are in mountains and caves saying, Hide us from him that sits upon the throne, for the day of his wrath has come. Like, like it says in the sixth seal. I do not believe that that has happened either. Again, these things happen at the same time because as you can see there in the sixth seal, they can see the Lamb on the throne, which means that that is the appearing of Jesus Christ, which means Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory, that is, when the rapture happens. And it's perfectly laid out in order to see the order of events. Because in chapter 6, seal 6, the rapture happens. Chapter 7, we see a multitude of us in heaven at the throne of God because of the rapture. And chapter 8, we see the first trumpet by the first angel being blown, which is the beginning of the wrath of God or the day of the Lord. Not the beginning of the great tribulation, but the beginning of the day of the Lord, which is the wrath of God. It even says it there in chapter 7, when the multitude are seen at the throne of God. It says, these are those that came out of great tribulation. That's us. Now going back to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. When Paul writes about the mystery of iniquity, and then you see a colon in the same paragraph. Then he says, only he who now lets, which is hinders, only he who now hinders will hinder until he be taken out of the way. And then that wicked shall be revealed. Speaking about the revealing of the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. So what needs to be taken out of the way, or who needs to be taken out of the way? Well, this is another deception, a seducing doctrine of a devil that has been told to Christians. And they have said that that is the Holy Spirit, which means that that is the church. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that that is the Holy Spirit. Who is the mystery of iniquity? Well, in the book of Revelation... You get your answer. Who is Mystery Babylon? Mystery Babylon is the mystery of iniquity. That is Rome. They needed to be taken out of the way because it was preventing the Jews from going back and building the temple all this time. But in 1948 and 49, that restrainer was removed. And now we see where we're at today. What was the restrainer according to the Apostle Paul? And 
and his disciples what he said. He said that Rome, imperial Rome, was the restrainer. Imperial Rome was the restrainer. Stopping the Antichrist from revealing himself. Now, let's wait right there. How would Imperial Rome stop the Antichrist from revealing himself? Follow me now. There is one place on the face of the earth, only one place on this planet that God chose and put his name on Mount Moriah. Here is where Solomon built the first temple and the glory of God came. Here is the place where they built the second temple and Jesus himself physically was in that temple at the feast of dedication at the feast of Hanukkah. He was there and that's why he said I am the light of the world at the feast of lights the feast of of dedication he was in the in the second temple God came to the first temple he came to the second temple he's coming to the third temple now Paul says Rome is the thing that's blocking is stopping the manifestation of the Antichrist why because the Antichrist must have a temple in Jerusalem on Temple Mount there is not a place on the face of the earth that the Antichrist will be revealed except in Jerusalem, on Temple Mount, in the temple. As long as Rome is stopping the Jews from going back and building the temple, the Antichrist will not appear on the earth. That's why I said Rome is the restrainer, is restraining the Jews from returning prematurely. And building the temple prematurely so that the Antichrist will enter that temple and manifest himself. That is scripture. That is what the Apostle Paul said. It is in the Jews that want to go back. They went back in in 132. Balkova revolt. Went back to try to build the temple between 132 and 135 AD. And Emperor Hadrian stop them slaughter them because it was prematurely because they are the restrainer they are restraining the building of the temple because as long as there is no temple the reason no the christ we know that it has to do with the geography it has to do with a location it has to do with a building on the planet the only place the antichrist will enter in and sit in the, in the temple of god and declare himself god the only place not in london not in New York, not in Washington, D.C., but in Jerusalem on Temple Mount. That is scripture. Therefore, those who teach people that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit, they are lying to the people of God. They are deceiving the people of God. It's not what scripture says. It's time to return to scripture and humble ourselves. One day, Jesus is coming.